Hey, and welcome to You Missed It! Uh, this is Andrew, and I had the the op- I got to pick the movie this week, and I picked an animated movie again. So, um, <laughs> starting to be a just, thing. Yeah, I'm just gonna uh, just gonna throw out the social media before I forget. Uh, we are on iTunes, SoundCloud, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, you missed it on Facebook. And on Twitter, where it is Why Am I Podcast underscore under, sorry podcast. Why Am I underscore Podcast. Don't forget that, or you will never find us. <laughs> so with that out of the way, uh, the movie we uh, that I did pick this week was The Rescuers Down Under, back from 1990. So about pretty pretty old. It actually came out um, uh, during the Disney Renaissance, uh, right at the beginning of that. So. It's uh, directed by, uh, I'm going to butcher this. Uh, well, no, I won't. I'll be okay. Kendall Butoy. <laughs> it's That's like a half butcher. And Mike Gabriel. <laughs> uh, it starred uh, Bob Newhart, uh, Eva, Eva Gaber, John Candy, Adam Ryan, uh, George C. Scott, and Tristan Rogers. Eva Gabor. Yeah, you Did butchered that one. Oh. You butchered that one. <laughs> no. That's okay. I'll butcher many names. Uh, <laughs> Uh, music was by Bruce uh, Bruce Broughton, um, which is a highlight for me. Um, it had a budget of thirty seven point nine three million and a box office of forty seven point four million. So it made a profit, but not a not too significant. It, it was pretty good, but uh, when it was upon release, it actually wasn't received that well. Uh, it was mixed reception, so it was it was a bit of an a uh, it it wasn't. Uh, it didn't do as well as a lot of the other films that uh, Disney put out during that renaissance period. So just a quick background on the film. Um, it was released uh, November 16, 1990. It's the 29th Disney film, uh, but it was a sequel to the 1977 uh, animated film The Rescuers, uh, which I actually haven't seen, funny enough. Um, I've only ever seen this movie. Um, But it's set in the Australian outback and centers on uh, Bernard and Bianca, who are from the first film, traveling to Australia to save a boy named Cody from a poacher and uh, who's in pursuit of an endangered bird, uh, an eagle. Uh, During the uh, sorry, the the it was the first animated theatrical film sequel produced by Disney, which is just um, uh, a fact I actually didn't know until looking into this film a little bit. Uh, and it was, uh, that was between, uh, 89 and 1999. That's considered the, uh, the Disney Renaissance era. So it was that second film. So very close to the beginning. I think the first film was, um, it was a little mermaid, mermaid. Yeah. little mermaid. Yeah. That yeah. was considered the start of it. And then it launched, uh, with uh, Beauty and the Beast, which yeah. came out after The Rescuers Down Under. Yes, because, uh, yeah, what, Be- um, Little Mermaid was 89? 89, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, oh, yeah, I actually had that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it did underperform uh, at the box office compared to other films of that era, like I was saying. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and last little fun fact is that it was the first film to be completely created uh, digitally and not use a camera. Yeah, um, nice. That's pretty so, cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I find this uh, to be underrated for for the reasons I stated as well. It's something that um, I personally have um, used to watch a lot when I was younger. I had the VHS back when we used to watch on those, and uh, I um, I haven't seen it in a while, but I had seen it a lot multiple times. So everything just cl- like even watching it again. Uh, everything just clicked back into place for me just because I, 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 it's, it's burned into your memory at that point when you do repeat viewings like that for movies you really like. So I'm curious to see what you guys thought of the film. So on to my left here, we'll start with Alex. what did you think? Hey, I thought it was pretty good. It was, it, I know it wasn't me. It was my parents who contributed a little bit to that 47 million cause they bought the tickets for me. I saw it in the theater back in 1990. Um, it was it was fun. Like, I I didn't remember anything about it until I saw it again. And it it's a good little cooling off film from Tetsuo. Yeah. 
big time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was nice. It was straightforward. It was fun. It it had a good score to it. A lot of good adventure moments. It was it was nice. It's just yeah, just yeah. a good old Disney film. Yeah, no politics, nothing crazy. Yeah, you got George C. Scott in there, so that's about as hardcore as it's gonna yeah. get, and that's all we need. And John, John Candy, oh man, I oh, miss yeah. that voice. I know, right? And uh, I love that character, Wilbur. Yeah, um, yeah. What a, what a well, it's just fun to listen to him. He's, he's just a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. And the the little side plot with his back all messed up had nothing to do with the main story oh, itself. No. But any chance you can get to get John Candy into the studio, you take it, even if you have to create like something that veers completely off the path. Oh, yeah. Who cares? You get John Candy. So exactly. why not? He's for sure a draw. Cause yeah, I think, um, so something uh, I kind of noticed, uh, watching this time that, uh, I, I obviously never picked up on as a kid, but I've never seen the first rescuer. So I don't know mm. how that connects, but I feel like whoever his sibling is or his brother or whatever, cause they say now under net go see Wilbur, like under new management. Yeah. Whoever that was before was obviously from the first movie, but then they got John Candy, I guess, to do a voice. So they're like, nah, we're, this is how we're going to fit him in. Yeah. That's what it seemed like to me, but I actually don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. No, I can't remember either. I have seen the first Rescuers, yeah. but it's been. It's was there been like a, a bird, that, eagle, the, or bird character? Yeah, in I don't know. The pilot, that, the, the pilot character was a dragonfly in that one, if I remember. No, correctly. there was a. Wilbur is like almost like a twin brother in a sense to oh, the okay. first one. And yeah. Oh, so Orville, like the right brothers. Yeah, that yeah. was, yeah, no, there was it because I remember like, yeah, they would go flying on us on a, basically a big seagull as well. So, oh, okay. So, okay. Um, so yeah, no, that, that is a gag. Cause I think they, I don't know who voiced the original. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the character's name, but, uh, but yeah, John Candy was like just a replacement and just write it in. But of course, you know, he worked pretty well. So. Absolutely. And like I said, with the, the last, film we reviewed every film and movie that we see should have something new in it that we've never seen before yeah and a bra on an albatross <laughs> voiced by john candy <laughs> that's something i've never seen before that's true that's awesome it's that is pretty great yeah uh he, his whole getup was pretty cool actually yeah a little scarf the aviator cap and the, and the goggles and stuff i liked him basically being a plane like an yeah. animal version of a plane, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it's changed. It's it's very different compared to, to what we have now just because you you can see like kind of the beginnings of, of what was to come uh, throughout that whole Disney renaissance in the 90s there, mm-hmm. right? So you can see that as kind of the beginnings. You can see flares of it in that, I, I find. Yeah, I liked the animation. I liked how it was smooth and it flowed and... A lot of great shots of the Australian outback too. That oh, was yeah. nice to see. Yeah, like that opening is pretty cool. Yeah, just like, absolutely. She just goes full speed ahead through nothingness, like nothingness, but lots of stuff still in a way. You know, yeah, like absolutely. It's all nature, but it's still very barren. Yeah. But yeah, you get that. I always found like when I, I was just remembering when I was a kid seeing this, is that it? it I felt. Uh, like I was there just that the world building was really good because I felt yeah. it feels Australian yeah yeah I, they kind of nail the setting I think yeah yeah well yeah oh, you, sorry uh, I didn't mean to cut you off did you have something to add or I did there was the the main bird itself that was the one in danger that George C. Scott's character was going after. Yeah. I think the animation on that bird was really realistic. If you've ever watched a nature documentary and you see how birds move and how they blink, yeah. how they look around, I think they nailed that really well. Yeah. Yeah. I never really picked up on that before. But yeah, now that you mention it, it, it looked pretty good. Yeah. Like you, absolutely. It's almost in, you, you don't have that moment where you're like, oh, that's, that's kind of weird or. That bird's moving weird. Yeah, it, nope. it just all felt, felt natural. Really natural. Yeah, all of, actually. Now that you mention it, like kind of all the animal movements were pretty good. Like even like the slithering of the that uh, Joanna. Sound Joanna, movie. yeah, <laughs> right. Like you're like, yeah, that's how they. That's how he would move because it's kind of like all over the place a little bit. It's kind of like left, right, and like it fits for the personality of the creature. Yeah, yeah. Why it's all over the place. It's a little bit comical, like anime style. Yeah. where it's moving really weird but i think it it works it makes sense for that character yeah. in that situation 
and George C. Scott, like 1990, so he was old. Yeah. Because yeah. if you remember seeing him in The Exorcist Part 3, mm-hmm. he was getting pretty up there. But you listen to him in this film, and he's pretty energetic for think, an old guy. Oh, yeah. So I think props both, to him. I think both those films came out the same year, they actually. Did. Yeah, 1990. 1990. Yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so good on him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know. He was given, he was given, he was putting his effort in. It Absolutely. sure sounded like it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh sure, see Scott. He always puts his, yeah. he always puts hundred ten percent into his performances. <laughs> He's always great. That's true. So, what about you, Jack? What did you think? Yeah. Um. So uh, I I have never seen this movie before. Uh, it's one of the few Disney films that I didn't see because I saw a lot growing up. I, mm-hmm. I I actually did get to see the Rescuers growing up, the first one. Yeah. A few times. So I that one's actually more ingrained into my head. So it was cool seeing this movie and just seeing a lot of the similar callbacks you know yeah. with because it is the, the the setup is very similar um where there's a kid that gets kidnapped by some adult um who has you know these um evil pets you know except in the first rescues there's like these two crocodiles or yeah. alligators and then of course B- miss uh, bianca and will what's his, the uh, uh, bernard. bernard bernard right yeah. um they come and rescue the kid um so those are very similar but the one thing I will say about this movie mm. um, that trumps the previous one is the animation. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The animation in this movie, um, particularly the first like five minutes, mm-hmm. is some of the best I'd ever seen in any Disney animated movie, yeah. like 2D. Uh, those flying sequences were outstanding. Yeah, they look really yeah. good. Like, holy shit. Like, some of those, like, you feel like like uh, the Doug Walker Nostalgia Critic... Uh, he was the one who kind of introduced this movie to me originally. I heard he was the first one who exposed me. I was like, "Oh, okay, there actually is a sequel." Mm. And he mentioned how the one thing about this movie that a lot of films don't capture is that sense of you're actually flying, mm-hmm. you're actually in the air. And this movie really does a good job at that, where you actually feel like you're floating for a split second. Just those moments where the eagle is soaring down, or when you're just hovering over like a waterfall for a split second, you're just taking everything, and you're like, "Holy crap, this is." epic this is amazing um and yeah anytime there was any flying it was breathtaking it was great um and in this movie it's just it's as you said alex it's just a fun sweet adventure film it's a straight up adventure film there's no bs there's it's a perfect family film where you can just get your kids together and just watch a fun you know a to z adventure film that's not offensive it's fun it's not stupid i think all the characters are well written and don't overstay the welcome. Joanna's my favorite character. Oh, yeah. Um, I yeah. love that. I love that lizard so much. I'm like, this is great. I'm so glad I got to finally see this character in a Disney movie. And George C. Scott, um, while obviously not the most memorable villain, oh, he gives, he is the reason why that villain is memorable. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. With his performance and his voice. I don't think his character has much depth because he's just, you know, a poacher. We've yeah. seen a poacher yeah. in a movie and he mm-hmm. dies like every Disney villain <laughs> falling to his death, yeah. um, which is great. <laughs> I'm like, some <laughs> things never change. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was cool. Um, yeah, no, overall, I, I did really like this movie. I'm, I'm, glad I, um, I'm glad I finally got to see it. So, yeah. I enjoyed it. It's great. Uh, what about you, Rylan? It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was my first time as well. I'd Like I said, I'd seen the first Rescuers, but I don't really remember a lot about it. It was pretty meh. Pretty meh. Uh, this one, this one, this one was solid. Uh, it was beautiful to look at. The shots, the the uh, background animation, the attention to detail, the lighting, the fluidity of all the characters. It's nice to listen to, to a great score, yeah. really set the tone. Um yeah, great uh, uh, vocal performances, especially by John Candy and uh, George C. Scott. So it's really extremely entertaining. Um, yeah, I guess we don't really explain why all of the animals except Joanna and the eagle talk. But no, yeah, there's there's it's just kind of you go with it kind of thing. Disney logic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess yeah. Cause I know that, that that's just set up I guess, funnier yeah. that way. I guess I know. Yeah, yeah. That, there's yeah. a couple. There's like there just seems to be like a couple of exceptions that appear mm. in like any type of universe like this. And <laughs> those are these ones, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. The Disney films. Some things talk and some don't in different movies. You know, Pocahontas. The animals don't talk, but the trees do. Mm. Um, <laughs> budget. <laughs> budget. Yeah. Budget. budget. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Who Who knows? Again, right? Just because. Uh, 
yeah, maybe they just didn't want to. I, I don't know why, actually, because, yeah, they, they actually clearly put some effort into Joanna and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So. Mm-hmm. That egg bit was fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That yeah, was, was probably really my good. probably the funniest part of the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> just, it was yeah, like. I think I think when I was younger, I really latched onto the animations in that movie. Mm-hmm. That was something that, like, yeah, so, like, the eggs, like, all the food looked, like, good. I don't yeah. know. It was just something about it. I don't know, like, the dinner <laughs> sequence at the beginning. Like, like, like the, 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 like, the pea soup and all that stuff yeah. and the way oh, they were, yeah, like, okay. cooking and stuff. Right. I don't know. It was just kind of, I, I dug it. I dug all the visuals in that movie. It's I an think early visually, iteration really of nice. that, like, miniature cooking that's so popular right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Like, those, eat, like, uh, those, uh, what do you call them? Those, uh, ovens or whatever that people yeah, easy, used to buy. Easy those bake ovens. Easy bake ovens, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, like, like, not even. There's, like, people who, oh, like, who do who, like, make, yeah, yeah. Who, like, make miniature food food like like cook and eat miniature food that's like the size of like your fingernail i've seen there's like all of these artists that do do that now it's it's pretty ridiculous it is it's kind of fun to watch though yeah no it's it's hilarious yeah (laughs) it's like using like these little like tiny like tools and stuff like that they make make themselves and like like actual like tiny tiny functional kitchen utensils and appliances to make tiny real edible food Yeah. It, it is pretty fun to watch i gotta admit yeah. I, I just had a quick ob- observation just like it seems like the night like from 77 to like 1990 there is like 10 animated kids from films starring mice yeah you know when you mm-hmm. think about like the rescuers and then you have um the secret of nim yeah and then you have an american tale mm-hmm. and then yeah. you have rescuers down under and then um the one that, that sparked the interest was um oh shit it's another disney movie Great mouse detective. what Yes, thank you. Uh, the Great Mouse Detective. That's another one. It just seems like they're the eighties was just like little mice doing human shit all over. <laughs> yeah, it's because they're cute. They are cute. Yeah, and yeah those marketable thing, little yeah. fuckers. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Anthropomorphize them and make them money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then it just the, works. And then the nineties, and it became like live action, like Mousetrap. Um, mouse Trap. Mouse Hunt. Mouse Hunt. Oh my mouse god. Hunt. Yeah. Mouse Hunt. Yeah. Classic. Talk yeah. about another classic. Who's, okay. Has everyone seen Mouse Hunt? Yes. yes. Mouse Eaters. Amazing. I love that. <laughs> I so did I. So did mouse I. Hunt was always one of my favorites. Oh man. my god. Okay, that's too bad. We've all seen it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I watched that to death as a kid. But yeah, so good. good. Yeah, just the destruction of that house. It's so. Oh, yeah. It's like yeah. Home Alone. You remember yeah. who? You yeah. remember who the um, who the. Yeah. The exterminator is played by Christopher Walken. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, it's so good. I know. Yeah. See, that was like on my list of like repeat viewings, like this, yeah. uh, that mouse hunt. Yeah. Like, yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely I watched the first Rescuers though quite a bit actually. It was one of the ones I did watch. Um, but yeah, I never I didn't even own this one. I owned mm-hmm. every Disney movie growing up except this one. Like this wow. is one of the few ones that just slipped through the radar. I don't know. It went down under. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what timing. <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> Yeah, Andrew's upset too. That's a perfect yeah. joke. Well, so speaking of that, that, of that could be a good segue to your turn, man. Yeah, what do you think? Zach? Well, I mean, I mean, I I come from a very similar background as you, Andrew, on this movie because again, I didn't see the first one. I grew up with this one, and I, I adored it as a kid. And I mean, it's great now too. Like it, it does shine through in a number of ways. But obviously, I have a lot of you know nostalgia kind of glasses. Yeah, on Yeah, well. that's what I was like thinking. right from the beginning. It was like, oh man, like just like the flying over you know like the title and everything yeah. it's like oh dun, i dun, remember dun, dun, this dun, dun. yeah <laughs> and the music and then it goes just the way it goes into the, the the window frame and stuff and i was like i remember this like so much as a kid mm-hmm. just yeah. these like shots just the way it was like set up and everything right it's just those things in your head and the whole egg scene i remember loving me that too. as a kid me too i thought yeah. that was fucking funny now like yeah so it's i think it's a testament that like you know it doesn't matter if you're a kid or an adult it it you know works for you right and many different avenues and of course i loved uh you know jersey scott and uh joanna like the exchanges <laughs> between those two like i love it when like when they're when they're dropping joanna down to get like the eggs or whatever and it's like all rocks and then he's like yelling down yeah. at joanna's so just like the little things like that are like really great too, anytime but... jersey scott was yelling it was instantly yeah. funny because he just has that growl you know like hey get up here well yeah but exactly. he makes it funny but he makes oh, it yeah, funny yeah. Yeah. oh yeah unlike me it's great <laughs> yeah no no he absolutely made that character entertaining yeah, oh yeah like was... him singing always used to get yeah, me yeah oh. me too yeah home on the range you know yeah. just the way he's singing i was just yeah. it's fantastic yeah it's so funny and 
yeah just just the little things like that like you know the really funny touches that are still really funny now the third grade line i thought is great <laughs> just, again you don't see it coming and it's like but it's perfect it's like it sums up so much and it's just it's awesome yeah and the animation is stunning like i love the shot where um you know wilbur like dives off when they first take off in new york and there's all the buildings mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and stuff like that shot stunning like there's mm-hmm. like i said the opening shots are yeah. really crazy and it's just yeah it's it's all around really good i'm i'm a big fan of this movie and yeah i don't know why more people didn't see it i guess it's because it was a sequel to a movie made years ago at that point maybe that's why yeah it was so much later that yeah. it's just one of those things that could you could just miss i guess i yeah. guess that's really it i mean you see yeah. it's like oh it's a sequel well i mean why would i see this movie like it's such a shame though because they yeah. don't treat it like a sequel they really don't no. you can watch i mean we watched it on its own that's mm-hmm. still the first one yeah i still don't know the connect like nope. the connections i'm just guessing it's, no, it's, it's well it's, i knew the the, the mice right bernard yeah and, uh, yeah those two and miss bianca and bianca. all that they rescue people yeah pretty much like it's it, yeah it's it's a, it's a similar story and i think that's maybe like i was reading a little bit of the reviews and a lot of them are saying the story is very just generic basic, it's yeah. basic right right yeah i think that when you're younger though you you kind of attach to like characters and visuals and stuff like that a lot more mm-hmm. probably like that's the vibe i get because like that's what i remember really attaching to in this movie and and yeah honestly like the animation is just yeah it's insane how good this mm-hmm. is and it, yeah it, it does just show what what disney end up doing later on you know because yeah. you got to think also like they just did little mermaid it was a big hit everyone loved it yeah um but they disney was still oh yeah they hadn't come out of it no. of the shitter quite yet <laughs> no yeah, it was uh, looked at as like a single hit kind of thing yeah. Yeah. yeah and then beauty and the beast was the one that really yeah. launched off because then after yeah. beauty and the beast you had aladdin well beauty and, and the beast then, was huge yeah i, and, I yeah. used to like the the weird thing is i think i used to go back to like like some of the big ones but the ones that i was really fond of were some of the ones that weren't as big as like a beauty and the beast or mm. a little mermaid yeah or a, well, my, my favorite... so, like I used to watch this a lot, right? Which yeah. it went yeah. way under the radar. I I watched uh, Fox and the Hound a lot, mm. and that um, wasn't quite as big as those other ones. No. Right? It, it was popular, but my favorite growing up was um, Peter Pan. Like mm. that's when I used Peter to watch Pan, yeah. all the time, yeah. and uh, I used to watch Fox and the Hound too. Uh, Robin Hood. I was just um, about to say you want to talk about an underrated yeah, Disney Robin movie that great. I grew Robin up Hood, with yeah. that I watched many times is Robin. Oh, Robin, Robin Hood is fantastic. I actually it's, love. It's that also movie. underrated how funny that movie is yep. too, especially with um, uh, King John and his oh uh, yeah, his yeah snake. Uh, I forget this. I forget name. the names it's, again. It's been so long, right? Um, but, yeah, but the, like and the action sequences are great too. The only thing that hinders that movie, as you can tell, is during the weakest time of Disney history, and the yeah. animation is a little cheap. Sure, um, but it's, it's actually, a good movie. Yeah, though. and they actually reuse some animation from uh, the Jungle Book too. Do they really? Yeah, they do. Certain dance sequences they kind of just traced over in oh, the same. They, they did, that, that wasn't the only movie they did that. They did it a lot during yeah, the sixties yeah. and seventies because this was again mm-hmm. the kind of like the low period of Disney. Yeah. So, but man, that yeah, that movie's really good too. Like that's another potential mm-hmm. and i think i have it on vhs only oh so do i yeah, <laughs> yeah i got there a go. massive vhs yeah. collection for that probably but... actually the one disney film that is the most obscure that i used to watch all the time was um the three cabuleros oh yeah mm-hmm. um, i never saw it but yeah i, I know either. it's if you were to watch it now it's the most random movie ever and okay. some of it's a little outdated um but it's basically just a donald duck uh live action animation crossover where mm. It was just like a series of like kind of like there's no real plot, no real like main arc. It's not like a like what we just watched. It's like a series of vignettes uh, mm. kind of stitched together with some uh, unique like just Donald Duck perving over a woman, and then one where he gets together with like this uh, Mexican bird with a sombrero, mm. and I forget the other one, um, this parrot. And they're just randomly just doing nonsense stuff that oh, shows okay. like the culture of like wherever they are or something like that. Oh, weird. And it's very unique, but I used to watch it all the time when I was a kid, just seeing all the dance sequences and all the visual uh, humor and all that really worked. So a cartoon version of Tetsuo. Yeah, perhaps. exactly. Uh, yeah, that's you what know I get. What? <laughs> <laughs> we should rewatch this. You know, movie. for the kitties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, a good family film too for, yeah. for all ages. Yeah, yeah. Very... In this day and age, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and after this, there's not a whole lot of other Disney movies I have left to see. Like, 
Oh, God. Oh, like oh, from their back catalog. Yeah, all like the main theatrical release films. I'm not gonna. Yeah, I was gonna. Oh, be, I was gonna God. be a smart ass and be like, "Did you see the Jungle Book?" I was gonna say, the wasn't there? One? Wasn't there a yeah, the Lion King two or whatever? Oh yeah, straight two and, and a half. You know what? Two and a half. That's what it was. Yeah. I thought it was a point five. No, no, no. Yeah. It's no. It's one and a half. One, oh, one and a half. half. It's right there. Right. On yeah, my that makes more sense. Sorry, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Wasn't it's there a, also a two? There was. Yeah, Lion King two, and then one and a half came out after two. Um, and actually, probably the the result of this movie um, is probably why we have all those shitty Disney sequels. Because yeah. look mm-hmm. what happened. They made one theatrical release sequel. It doesn't do too well. So they do all DVD after that. With the first one being Return, to Jafar, Return of Jafar. Right. And yeah. then after that, it was just like every year. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. You they know? did the Beauty and the Beast one, too. Yeah. Was the, that one. And There's ooh. two Beauty and the Beast. That's ones. right. There's yeah. the Enchanted Christmas and all that. That's the one I wow. saw was the Enchanted Christmas. <laughs> and then there's like hunchback there's the yep. aladdin there's hercules there's um hercules yeah atlantis yeah um all those uh <laughs> yeah. I'm, not, I'm not thinking of all the tv shows was, that was, made out of this. Uh, no the, it was a different and who did uh, prince of egypt oh that's um dreamworks dreamworks yeah the, yeah it was one of their early ones that was i think that was their first one it was the actually. first i think that was their first movie oh uh, okay scorpion was... king, <laughs> scorpion king. Yeah. Yeah. oh yeah <laughs> Oh, it's a classic. Oh, so good. It's it is so great. Good. No, it is great. I, I love that movie. Yeah, it, <laughs> back, when like the, the back when he actually Disney. went by The Rock. It's so good. Yeah, for like for his first three movies, he was just The Rock. And then the rock. finally he added Dwayne. He's like, wait, yeah. Dwayne. <laughs> so good. Yeah. yeah. And uh, no, there was some other one as well that, uh, yeah, it was. Um, the Road to El Dorado. Oh, that yeah. one that was what i was thinking of yeah, yeah. that's also uh, dreamworks yeah right yeah, that no. was when they were having like their first bit of success there yeah right? no I, I watched that one a lot too um it yeah, was that so and good. chicken run i used to watch yeah. all oh, the chicken run is awesome yeah. nice that oh, God, that was good <laughs> yeah no those yeah. ones were like in the mid 2000s because disney's like near the end of the re- renaissance it started becoming less prevalent you know after mm-hmm. kind of tarzan is when it is when they tarzan's considered the last one yeah. of the renaissance because after that was Fantasia 2000. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that dinosaur movie. Oh, um, yeah. The 3D one, yeah. which I, I, I saw that in theaters and it was meh. Um, and then Atlantis, The Lost weird. Empire. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, which I need to watch that again. I haven't seen it. In I so actually long. loved the first Atlantis movie. I mean, yeah. the, 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 the sequel is complete trash, but the. Yeah, like, I didn't even know there was a sequel. Um, there was what, Treasure Planet, <laughs> too? There was Treasure, Treasure Planet. Treasure Planet's a good yeah, one. Yeah, before too. Treasure Planet, there was Lilo and Stitch, which, which was, was, that which was, that was great. Yeah. yeah. But then after Treasure Planet, then you had Brother Bear. Oh, boy. Uh, and yeah. then you had Home on the Ridge. Oh, boy. And then it was, Home on the yeah, Ridge. And then, and, then it was, and, then it was, and then it was done. And then it was done. And then it went all to like the CG stuff of like Meet the Robinsons and oh, yeah. Chicken oh, Little. Yeah. And, Chicken Little and I Chum one. Oh, yeah. Oh, my and then God. Bolt. Um, Bolt. I heard Bolt was I, good. I, I liked Bolt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I think I'm forgetting one. But, but anyways, like Disney really dipped after uh, really Tarzan. Yeah, Maybe and then it wasn't, I guess, until what the Princess and the Prince. I was gonna say to, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the only one they've done since. That's 2D. So yeah. yeah, no. After like Lion King, then they have Pocahontas, which didn't do too well. Um, it was mixed, but it's whatever. And then there's the Hunchback, which I think is really good. I want to make a horror movie version of Pocahontas called Pocahontas, where they oh hunt my people. God. <laughs> 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 so anyway, I, I fucking I, murdered Jack. I think I was surprised. I, I, <laughs> how did you oh not see that coming? How did you oh, not God. see that a mile away? <laughs> <laughs> and Andrew's just so upset. <laughs> I think how off better. topic we're going is probably uh, because... we're staying on topic with it's Disney. Disney. Reasons, but... It's Disney. Oh my god! No, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it broke me, but that that works. <laughs> yeah, Pocahontas. It's <laughs> great. Yeah, but when you like when we're naming all these movies, but I can it, it, it makes sense why. I, like I'm not surprised this didn't do too well. Because yeah. besides the animation, there's nothing it's really... It's a little more by the numbers. Yeah, there's nothing yeah. that stands out besides the animation, in my opinion. I think opinion. the comedy no, well, no, the com- no, the comedy's the good. Comedy, I, I would say the music is pretty good, too. Yeah, that, too. too. I, I yeah. dig it. Like, yeah. it really fits the tone of the movie, just because yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, it's like that... It feels like it fits in an Australian setting. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Like, dun, 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 right? It like, really it's does. really... 
fast it has all the like uh kind of like drum sounds yep. and and uh yeah like uh kind of like maracas almost stuff kinda like oh, that's right? you know, it's, it knows exactly like it's perfect it's perfect like <laughs> yeah. australian culture like the entire thing just reeks of Australia. and that soaring and like uh adventuring theme has always been a, a mm. i love that so yeah um but yeah no it works no all that works well but again like when you compare it to like how iconic all the other films were mm. surrounding yeah. it. It's kind of, again, you can't, I'm not surprised. It's kind of still well, following up little mermaid. I get it. Yeah. yeah. And then like, even like all the other animated films around that time. And also what it came out against, like it opened, I read that it opened fourth on its opening weekend up against like, uh, yeah, Home it Alone. opened very poorly. Yeah. Opening yeah. against like they did, pulled all the advertisements after one week. Yep. Yeah. I remember they lost, con- completely lost confidence in the movie yeah. right away. Like it was, <laughs> they dropped it so I still hard. think the main reason though that it wasn't successful is because it was a sequel to a movie that was 13 years older yeah and then I think that's a bad at that time people too. are like yeah. oh I don't know yeah. this series yeah why would I go you see know, it why I mean, and it makes sense yeah like the kids who might have seen it are like grown up and have their own kids which yeah. can work to your advantage sometime and like work, if you happen to see it and, work yeah. be though advantageous the, for you but though the yeah. first one was a bigger hit yeah I mean um, I mean the only other thing I can think of that's kind of done that like or Disney wise is um, the Toy Story, right? Because uh, yeah. between Toy Story two and Toy Story three, that was a big gap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like, God, what was that? It actually, was like, it was like, uh, it was under ten years. Yeah, actually, the the actually the one that had the longest times between sequels was Peter Pan, actually, because they did release uh, the Return to Neverland animated sequel in like two thousand and two or something like that oh, in okay. theaters. Right. So they released a direct DVD movie in theaters because I thought, oh, this actually won't be too bad. So that one, the first Peter Pan was released in like 1952 or something like yeah. that. So that's like almost 50 years in between sequels. So I think that one uh, is holds the record. For that's the, the longest. Yeah. yeah but th- then it was also the fact, I think, that like, say for Toy Story, that um, it was the third. It was just like a sequel. It was like yeah. the it was the end of a trilogy. But yeah. it had happened. The second entry had been so long ago. Mm-hmm. That it was, it it just worked out though because all the adults went to go see it, right? Because it was so big. Yeah, and yeah, also, I guess the difference is the rescuers wasn't that as big. Yeah, like, it still isn't the, as big. It as, still like, isn't yeah. nowhere near as iconic or memorable no. as everything else. Like I think people would still bring up like Fox and the Hound more, or oh totally uh, than yeah. this than mm. these two films or any of the other like robin hood sword in the stone any of these mm. movies are i still think have much more staying power than the rescuers i think they had more going for the plot wise right like, yeah say fox and the hound for instance that's like really emotional and uh mm-hmm. and like uh, the the plot's pretty impactful and, and it, yeah it's, it's got some it's, depth to it yeah it's got depth mm. this this i agree that this is pretty like the plot is pretty superficial it's just like it's, uh, it's not doesn't have much depth to it. It's a little sh- a little shallow, I guess. A little straight to the point. It's like a fun adventure film. I think and that's about it. I think adding any of that, I think would have re- messed up the movie, though. Mm. I think yeah. How this- well, it's like a quick, like uh, lean, like quick pace kind of just one adventure. Yeah, and they did. They mm. executed this movie tremendously well. Like from such a very. Uh, vague plot and just overall story what they did with it was really good like yeah. like we we've, we've been you know glowing the over the over the animation for this movie and deservedly so it's it's breathtaking it's great it's it's as you're saying it's so smooth and just the depths they put into like the characters especially when they're flying in the wind and then all like kind of like the even the early cg landscapes of the of the city lines and all that were still like really cool because you just yeah. see the depth of them coming towards you and all that and yeah it's it, it's yeah no just the overall presentation and just Very execution good, yeah. was really solid it yeah. was really good no i agree i agree yeah it's it's uh it's one of those movies that i think uh yeah i think just like you were saying zach i think nostalgia kind of plays a factor yeah just because you remember it so fondly um but then at the same time, it is uh, it is still solid. I think well, yeah, the, elements, the but, testament that yeah. it works so well, again, it's like it proves yeah. that, no, it's not like just nostalgia, though, because otherwise you'd be able to tell. You'd be able to be like, okay, yeah. you know, yeah, like nostalgia, I remember this, but, you know, maybe this, I don't remember this being as good as I thought it was, but this mm-hmm. actually, like, it held up. 
in every regard yeah really so i think that's a big testament to the film i think this is a a good film to to kind of like if you have like if if you have kids then to show to your own kids right Mm -hmm. something that they can really easily enjoy and grab like grasp onto and Mm -hmm. it's not too crazy in that it's like emotionally all over the place right like imagine showing your kid like up or something you know where it's like whoa that's just like that's heavy that's heavy for for like a say like a three four year old or something right you show them something like this like they'll still feel they'll feel like strong emotions because they're young right mm. they latch on to things a lot more mm-hmm. they'll feel strong emotions but it won't be as like emotionally like uh, like uh, it won't take you emotionally all over the place like something like modern disney pixar and stuff like that where it takes you to some pretty crazy places mm-hmm. like because you know like up for instance deals with like cancer and stuff or well, like death mm-hmm. and stuff like that in, in a big way and like some pretty adult issues yeah mm-hmm. whereas like th- something like this like i feel it works really well for for young kids especially if you want to introduce them to like movies and animation and disney mm-hmm. i think stuff like this works great yeah, it this... works for a young younger audience as well yeah this is safer to show your kids than bambi that's for sure i mean tets of the iron shit. man might be a little safer though yeah tets of, the, tets of the iron man i think that's a good kid that's if you want to like hey mm-hmm. you got an f in your report card <laughs> oh, that's, no. that's, that's if you really oh, want to that's test, abuse that's if you really want to test your your uh <laughs> your kid's resolve is and to, sanity <laughs> yeah <laughs> see see how how much damage you really can do <laughs> <laughs> uh, i uh, guess uh we'll just go around the table now and get some some final some final thoughts and sum up uh what you guys thought i'll so, mention one thing yeah, though yeah. we were talking about the the two birds and all that wilbur and uh, yeah wilbur and... um yeah so yeah the the original voice actor um i don't know who he is his name is jim jordan he, he was in this old show in the 30s and 40s but he died before uh this one oh, came out. Oh, okay. Um, and one little thing. Uh, do you know the significance between the with the names Orville and Wilbur? I said it already. Oh, you did. She yes. did. Oh, yeah, I missed that. Yeah. Sorry. So she um, mentioned it. Oh, okay. My bad. Yeah. I didn't hear that. Sorry. But uh, yeah, no, that's a neat little you know uh, fun fact. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> too bad I missed it's, it. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> Why? Well, I, I for yeah, sure. Where have mi- you been? I for sure missed it, and I also never saw. A, I would never have gotten that reference when I was younger. Oh, no. neither would I. I wouldn't have got that until I looked up like, oh. B, I never saw the first one, so that reference would mean nothing to me yeah. again. So, like, because I wouldn't have known half of it. Uh, like, yeah, I wouldn't have made that connection. So, yeah. But it's interesting to know now because that's, that's new information for me. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Does this, uh, after re-watching this, does this uh, make you want to watch the uh, the original? The very first one? Does it make me want to watch i'd watch the original i'm interested in what yeah for sure like it's mm. one of those things where i like this movie uh, a lot and it, it i have fond memories of it that i would absolutely love to see the the characters again in something different i don't know that i'll like it as much because yeah i something i absolutely noticed about this movie watching it again was how much i was uh into the setting mm-hmm. so changing setting i don't know because then you'd lose the australian outback and all that stuff that kind of brought me the animation in, in a big is way so different to like it's also little... the yeah the age of the film too right mm-hmm. so yeah, i'm wondering difference. what i'm i'm curious i'm definitely curious enough to watch it's the a original. lot darker like the first one yeah. is a lot yeah, I was darker gonna say, yeah it's it's the settings are a lot darker so it doesn't yeah. you don't have you don't get to play with light and color the way that this yeah, film yeah. they're, they're more in a swamp um, that's where she's being the yeah. chase being held but it's still like it's it's more of the kind of like that moody kind of like murky kind of like uh sexy yeah um it, it works for that setting um but like i said it's still the animation is also a lot cheaper on the end too yeah uh, like they're for budget comparisons uh this one i think you said it was like what 30 million dollars the budget for uh, this 37. one 37 yeah, yeah the original was only seven um, just to kind of give you an idea, and even yeah. though even though there was a thirteen year difference, that's yeah, still like there's with still inflation big, and stuff, but there's still a difference. It's still yeah. a huge difference. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, anyways. Uh, yeah, so I guess we'll go to to you, Alex. So just some final thoughts. As Jack was saying, it's a family film, and it is like both kids and adults can enjoy it. I think. Like I said, I don't remember watching it as a kid in the theater. I imagine I had a good time watching it because yeah. I was very susceptible to entertainment and just laughing at anything yeah but even watching it now i was laughing like it was a good time yeah had. i think yeah. i was laughing at different stuff well it's some of the same stuff for sure but uh different stuff as well like finding it a little funnier i thought yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Joanna, I think I want to make a comparison to the land before time. Oh, oh yeah. Good one. Mm, yeah. I yeah. think they they were going they were trying to take a little bit of the comedic elements from there and bring it into this film because after the success of The Little Mermaid, Disney had some money. So I think the idea was that some exec or someone at Disney said, "Let's I've wanted to do a sequel to The Rescuers. Now we got the money, now we got the time. Let's do it." And they said, "Okay, well we got to make it a little modern." Uh, okay, Australia. We'll make it brighter. And what else? We got to get the kids in, so um, we'll put in like a dinosaur kind of thing. Yeah, that'll get them in. So land before time. Dinosaurs were big at that time. Yeah, they were definitely big. Yeah. I was into dinosaurs for years and years. Yeah, in the 80s. Dinos- I just remember we're back. that a dinosaur. Thing. Oh yeah, dinosaurs were yes. the kids thing in oh, the nineties, yeah. yep. big time. Uh, yeah, I was between in- Jurassic Park and yep. Land Before Time, and there were there were so many. Like McDonald's would sell would have uh, kids meal toys with. Uh, uh, dinosaur stuff like throughout the multiple points. I remember that. Like, Beast I'd, Wars. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, dinosaurs are huge. So I get that. That makes sense. It's like a reptile, like dinosaur esque, mm-hmm. uh, like animal, right? So that's that's pretty neat. Yeah, just to bring that in a little bit to yeah. for some some not revival, but just some some more color to it. Yeah. Make it a little bit different from the first one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they had enough characters that it could keep the storyline going, but they didn't have so many characters that your attention was all over the place yeah. with it. Like you had the two main, you had Wilbur, you had the the Boy. villain and the sidekick. Yeah. So they kept it pretty tight, which was great. Yeah. And uh, I, there wasn't really much to say about the the rescuers themselves. Yeah. But I do want to mention Bob Newhart because he's yeah, he's yeah. a good guy and I like Bob. Yeah, and you could really hear his like just the the dullness. Sorry, Bob. The <laughs> dullness of the Bob Newhart voice, but I I think it fits. It did. It, yeah, it goes well with the character. And and I think at the time in '77 when the first one came out, I think he was, I think he was pretty well known at that point because Mash was still. On TV, I'm thinking. Well, he had the Bob, seven. Seven? Well, yeah. he had the Bob Newhart show, and yeah. then he okay. had uh, 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 he had a second show after yeah. that too. Um, I'm not sure everything he did around the 70s though. So, but Mash mm-hmm. was around. Yeah, I yeah. keep forgetting he was in that. Yeah. Oh yeah. There were a lot of people in Mash. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It was yeah. a it was a mash of many sorts of people. Oh, mm-hmm. shut up! <laughs> <laughs> you broke Alex. <laughs> That's enough of that. Yeah. Oh, shut up. <laughs> so all around, good film. Nothing nothing that stands out too much or that makes it too great, but it's definitely a film to sit down and watch and have a good time with, with friends and or family. Or I think even by yourself, you can sit down and you can have a good laugh and a good time with okay. a film like this. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, what about you, uh, Jack? Uh, final thoughts? Yeah, no, overall, um, I, I'm i glad I finally got to see this movie. Uh, seen the, the film, uh, the one Disney film released the one month before I was born. So it was the last movie released before I was alive. There you go. So it was Tetsuo for me. Yeah. It was, it was oh, wow. You know getting, uh, what? You're right. There you that, go. That's, that's a good, good set, good connection there, man. Nicely done. Yeah. Um, let's never speak of it again. Um, <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm too mean to Tetsuo. Um, you are. <laughs> I, you uh, are. Um, but yeah, no, overall, like, yeah, I, I'm, this movie was pretty solid. Uh, it's definitely underrated uh, for sure compared to all the other Disney movies that we have listed in this entire higher episode so far oh yeah um, uh, did you mention fern gully was that disney as well uh that was not disney no never mind um that i think it was warner brothers something like that what about the black cauldron that was the yeah, was. Hey, okay. was, uh, that's that's considered the lo- the lowest of disney lows yeah fuck everyone who says that i love the black cauldron. <laughs> you know what it lost to in the opening weekend i don't I remember care. that the care bears movie oh. <laughs> That's how far cared. down. That's how far down they went. No, they that's lo- how far down society was in the toilet that yeah, they had to choose Care Bears yes. over the Black Cauldron. I know. Fuck oh, all man. you people. I think I only read the books. I don't think I ever saw that movie. I've seen the Care Bear movie. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh. oh Jack. Thanks, Mom. Oh. What about um, 
Was that uh, Mickey Mouse Christmas? Like, I think it's Once Upon a something or whatever. It's like uh, Mickey yeah, Mouse they Christmas. Ha- they have Once short... Upon and Twice Upon a Christmas. That's what it was. Yeah. They were both home releases? Yes. yes. Both of them? Okay. Pretty yeah. much any, like, besides Because they're fan... just, like, anthologies. Of, like, yeah. Yeah. Episodes, yeah. They're, so, like, yeah. Uh, their own self-contained short yeah. stories. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's what they did in, like, the late 40s. They would take a bunch of, like, short films and then yeah. just kind of make an uh, anthology film out of it. Mm. Um, that's where we got, like... Um, uh, the what was the toad one again? Um, proper in the ah, no, that's not his name. Um, what was the uh, the one with the throwing pumpkin head again? What's that one called again? Ah, uh, that was Sleepy Hollow, oh, yeah. yeah, Sleepy Hollow. Um, Ichabod or Crane, Ichabod Crane, yeah, yeah, those ones, and uh, all those films were kind of like just little shorts that they compiled together because yeah. they were cheap. And it was just it was just after the war too, so mm-hmm. they were sort of bringing it up, and then Cinderella kind of took them back off to their theatrical ways. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But anyways, um, overall, yeah, no, I think this is a is a solid movie. Uh, definitely recommended to pretty much anybody. I think anyone can at least see this movie once and get something out of it. And yeah, I can't wait to show this to my kids growing up when yeah. one day. Right? It should yeah. be one of those. Even watching both movies back to back, I think, it'd be kind of neat mm-hmm. one day. Um, yeah, I'm sure the kids kids would love this movie. They for would sure too. It's, yeah. it's a good thing to share, I think. Yeah, and like I, like the fact that I still remember the first one, and I probably haven't seen it in like 20 years or yeah, something like that. Sticks out. Eh? It, it still sticks out, and yeah. it's yeah, it's definitely it's no aristocrats, um, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, which ugly. Oh um, <laughs> Forget about did uh, uh the did we 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 didn't mention the groovy movie did we oh the goofy movie you mean i mean uh yeah sorry the oh, goofy you mean evil dead, <laughs> evil dead groovy movie yeah the groovy the goofy groovy movie yeah yeah the groovy movie. i saw that I'd too see that. Yeah. yeah i've seen the go- goofy movie yeah, yeah. i have too yeah yeah that one was skateboarding good. Oh yeah, I uh, remember. Polish. I love, I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was hot. actually that one's. Yeah, I remember that being really actually good. I heard it's uh, still really still holds up because of the uh, the the, dy- the dynamic with uh, Goofy uh, and his son Max. Yes, yeah, Max. Yeah, yeah that's supposed to be like handled really well. And all it that. totally is. Yeah, so I like love... he's embarrassed. It's that whole that growing up. Yeah, uh, is like a almost a teenager kind of thing. Yeah, where you're trying to have your own identity and stuff like that, and your dad's embarrassing, right? Pretty Especially much. if your dad's goofy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's goofy. Like, come on. Yeah, but damn, like uh, Goofy wasn't much of a character up until that point. I don't think, like, with much depth, he was very no. superficial, right? Once that the goof, like that Goof Troop very show came level. out, when the Goof Goof Troops came out, um, and that's what the Goofy movie came out as. Um, yeah, that really added into Goofy's world because yeah, he was just the you know the idiot who just yeah. shit happened to him there wasn't much to him he, yeah i don't even think he had a girlfriend he just had the funny voice there was no female that. equivalent of goofy no. there was yeah. just a bunch of goofies and they would be mean and get you know tackled and get stuck in i'm rambling now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just flashing all these like old disney cartoons i'm like there's so many i can't i know they all shit. like melt together it's like kingdom hearts in your head uh, oh god <laughs> God, if I actually played those games. <laughs> it's like just Disney. I don't know. They're all together. It's all mixing together. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I always watched Donald Duck growing up. That was my, that was my shit. It was always Donald Duck. Yeah. Mm. It's, yeah. I think it's just, everybody has nostalgia for Disney. So I think at a certain point, it just, uh, yeah. like er, everything holds up from Disney. But, uh, well, most things. Most things. Some things um, like uh, Song of the South. No. Um, <laughs> Jeez. No. Actually, I, I can say that's the, one of the other Disney films I have not seen. However, yeah, I don't. Makes sense. I there's don't a, there's a lot of Disney films I haven't seen, for sure. Just, just there's so many. What's there's the main so one? Many. What's the main one you haven't seen? Ones that I haven't seen? Like, uh, there was a bunch you guys were mentioning that Punch I haven't seen Punchback Notre Dame? No, no, no. I've seen that. Um, no, you were mentioning like Arist- Aristica- uh, oh, the Aristocats. Oh, the Aristocats, yeah. And like uh, Black Cauldron. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen... Like uh, uh, there were a few that you... There was a few others that you were mentioning. There was that one the, that oh, you were describing earlier. Oh, the Three Cabelleros. Um, yeah. yeah, I haven't seen that. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a decent amount. There's just so many Disney movies. All it's Dogs to, Go like, to Hell. All. <laughs> all Dogs Go to Hell. <laughs> That's Do- that's Dom that. Blue, especially <laughs> if you're in China. Yeah. No. Ooh. 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 You need a black cauldron Ow. for that one, Ouch. don't you, bitches? Ouch. <laughs> Damn, man. All right, so Rylan, <laughs> final, final thoughts from you. So you're not a fan of Mulan. 
Oh, I don't think I've seen that one. Mulan's oh, good. really? Yeah. No. Yeah. Mulan, I also haven't seen. Although yeah, now all I can think once. of when I when I hear Mulan is Szechuan sauce. Oh. Oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think Mulan's been ruined for me. <laughs> <laughs> Eh, uh, you'll watch it one of these days. Just want to get my Szechuan sauce. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that movie's now ruined for every McDonald's employee ever, too. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I'm i so glad I didn't actually go down to one of those locations in the, in Why? the oh, States. Oh, my God. Can you believe Szechuan sauce? I was, like, Pandemonium. thinking about it. I'm like, ah, it might be funny. I'm like, nah, nah. no. And they ran out. No. And yeah. then I heard all the drama. It's like, oh, thank God. I didn't even go near that. Oh yeah, and like and like packets of the sauce are going on on eBay for like hundreds of dollars oh, or yeah. something. It's just like fuck sakes, you guys. Oh Jesus! But yes, uh, yeah. So just some final thoughts from you, Island. Yeah, um, this is a solid, solid movie. Um, really good uh, family film or all ages film. There's definitely something for everybody in here. You can get some enjoyment out of it. Um, yeah, I mean, I think. Really, just because I didn't grow up with this movie, I don't have that nostalgia for it, so I'm not sure if I could would lump it in with any of my top favorite Disney movies or mm. even go so far as to call it underrated, but it's definitely one that I would... I, and I don't know if it's it has much rewatch value for a movie by myself either, uh, but it's definitely one that I would pull out in a few years to show to any future offspring I may have. <laughs> <laughs> Zach? The nostalgia is great with you. Rescuers! Oh my. Come out to play! (laughs) (laughs) This is is getting. This is a silly one. This is a silly one. I think Tetsuo just. Like fucked with us so much that we it's couldn't past, even it's past all y'all bedtimes. Oh. <laughs> that that we couldn't even, uh, you know, ha- we were all just in shock. But then now, 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 <laughs> it's a kids movie. The silliness is coming out. That's it. Yeah, the, the deadly combo. You you heat up with the first film. You get overwhelmed. You get you know seeing crazy shit, and then you get to that nice, uh, you know, kids film. You just kind of like soften out a little too much and. <laughs> Just let it all out. <laughs> so that's what happens. Is this an allegory for bowel movements? What are you talking about? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. No. I mean. I mean. I, I you know. You know. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> and that about sums it up with Zach. All right. That's. Uh... <laughs> yeah. No. I. You know. It's. Uh, yeah. It. It's definitely something that uh, is is more, uh, kid like family friendly. So it's it's not if you're looking for like a Disney Pixar level of of uh, of quality from Disney, uh, it's not it's not that. It's just the beginnings, but there is something still there. So I so that's why I would argue it's uh, underrated, just because it's not on any radar. Oh yeah, pretty for sure. Much. So. Yeah. It's uh, it's something that you, you wouldn't regret watching, and it's a, especially something that if you if you have uh, kids, pull it out and watch it with them because it's something you don't have to just put on for them. You could watch with them and feel good about it. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, yeah, that uh, just about sums this one up. I think next week is um, Alex. Yeah, I actually uh, it, I I'm interested for your picks cause just because because I, I I've been surprised by what you've brought a few times now. So um, where I've kind of just uh, bit enjoyed it and been pleasantly surprised. So <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm like uh, some people's picks. We get at Bernie's oh. too. Uh, we get at Bernie's too. Oh. No, Let's go. no. Oh, I'll quit the show. <laughs> <laughs> we get at Bernie's too. Now that I that's a good be film. on board with. That's a good no. film right there. That's right. I have a very I'll, good time. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you this at least that over the first one. So. Yeah, we well, we established that because I remember we watched two at first. I made you watch it. And you just sat there in misery, and then we're like, "Let's watch the first one" because I bought it for Jack. And then Andrew happened to be there, and you were just like, "They didn't even go for it." Like the second one at least went all out, but like the first <laughs> one's just bad. The first one's just boring as shit. I think it's hilarious. You, 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 
<laughs> your sense of humor, man. I think Jack watching it is hilarious. <laughs> and I mean, that, yeah. and that heightens the experience. You're absolutely yeah. correct. Well, that's probably why you enjoy it so much. <laughs> I don't know. We <laughs> can't have Bernie's is pretty good. There is humor there. There is something about a dead body just getting, like, yeah. hit, and it's, it's great. Yeah, and just having it's a just dead great. body, like, people <laughs> react to a dead body. I just remember it on the jet good. ski or whatever. Oh, just, like, hitting them. I mean, so that's good. great. The imagery like, in that it movie. Is, it, it, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, comedy I watched, gold. I watched the Siskel and Ebert review of this movie, <laughs> and it made me so happy. <laughs> Someone's on your level. Oh, they, they were right with me, man. Just yeah. like, that was when they had. That's when they had to take it seriously. Like, yeah. You know that they got brought- voodoo in number two. So, See, that's the thing. It's better. It gets better. They at least acknowledge better. how stupid and ridiculous this whole premise is. So yeah. just go with it and just, just do whatever you want. And it still sucks, but, but what's you know. worse, the voodoo in Weekend at Bernie's Two or the we- voodoo in Blues Brothers Two Thousand? Oh, yeah. that's a good question. I haven't seen Blues Brothers Two Thousand, so I can't really say exactly. But both, <laughs> yeah, shit. I can go with that. Just voodoo in movies. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> both are unnecessary comedies. But you know, which one's more offensive? I don't know. Mm. There's nothing to hang on to Weekend at Bernie's at all, so I guess that's worse. But yeah. at the same time, Blues Brothers 2000 had hype because yeah. it was the sequel. And being, it being a letdown, maybe that's worse. I don't know. I think I'm thinking too hard about this it right now. people the blues. That's right. That was yeah. the worst. So I- <laughs> you had me laughing my ass off on the last oh, two you just yeah. did. And this one, nope. You're done. Oh, yeah, blues. <laughs> so, Alex, are you picking Weekend at Bernie's too? Or is that... Uh... No. Off the table, okay. No, it's going to be Revenge of the Nerds 2. No. There you go. Yeah. There's yeah. going to be another film involving the media. Ooh, good question. Partially, yeah. Good question. Okay. It's going to be what, Ed TV? <laughs> <laughs> Ed TV with Matthew McConaughey? No, if I had to go with something like that, I'd pick Truman Show, but that's yeah, more you're right, popular. Actually. But you're right, yeah. yeah I can't Truman go with something Show. like that. Yeah, yeah, oh, it's too popular. Even though it was a great film. But yeah. it, a lot of people know Peter Weir films, so yeah. I can't go there. That's true. That's mm-hmm. true. Yeah. But I got somewhere to go, and and the name is Bob. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, I know what it is. Okay. No, you don't. Oh, I do. No, you you, you oh. mentioned it before. Oh, maybe I did. You did. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned it to me. Yeah. It gave me the blues. Oh. Uh, okay. He took it back. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, until next week, then. Later, Gator. Later, Gator.